Way to start the clap for yourself. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, real quick, the next presenter uh, lives and breathes tuna. Uh, there is a lot of gray area when it comes to tuna. We, uh, gray, gray area. Uh, I mean this in the best sense. It's one of the things we struggle with because it's, it's such a moving target. And Richard has been a great source of information, helping us to identify the product. And he's going to shed some some real great light on this product. And his his, his email says it all. His uh, it's tuna dude at whatever dot com. So Richard Carroll from Jensen Tuna. Hello. Um, I'm Richard Carroll with Jensen Tuna. Uh, just to give a little bit of background, um, I'm a second generation fishmonger, and I want to kind of touch on a, a one thing real quick. Is um, I was running a, 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 a seafood market up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Mike and uh, Richard came to me in the early 2000s uh, just on a cold call, and um, they started talking to me, I was a buyer at the time, and um, they pitched what they had going, and I instantly took to it. And during the whole time that I was working as the buyer, I was doing a lot of my product with Fruget. And I want to tell you that Richard and uh, Carol um, got me out of a lot of jams and they did a really good job and they stood behind their product and so when i left to uh to start selling tuna on the wholesale end of it uh, i instantly picked up and started dealing with brad who was the buyer um, i stand behind them 100 percent they are a great company i think they do a wonderful jobs and and um whatever you guys take out of this i hope that you can go back to your companies and think of Fruge when it comes to the seafood industry. They do a really good job. And I want to thank them very much for everything they're doing for us right now. Come on! Okay, Jensen Tuna. Uh, Jensen Tuna is based out of Louisiana, uh, home of Louisiana it is. We have a dock down in Dulac, Louisiana. Uh, we have boats that fish, probably about 15 uh, boats that fish out of Louisiana. Uh, they unload in Dulac, Louisiana. Um, and the Gulf uh, tuna and swordfish is by far, hands down, some of the best. We do some importing, and I feel bad after uh, the presentations of, of, of Louisiana uh, pushing the wild Louisiana, but and the and I'll talk about it later on. But in the winter time, um, we have to subsidize a lot of our business because the fishing is not necessarily the best, and so we do bring in some imports. But our bread and butter is a swordfish and tuna out of Louisiana. Um, we um, the, when they when they go out and fish and they come into our dock, we are a vertically integrated company. So from the dock where the boats come in and they will bait, ice, fuel, we, have, we own all those, we own the, the bait house and the ice house. So they'll come in and they'll load up and they'll go out and fish and they go out for seven, 10 days and then they come back to our dock and then our technicians go down to the dock, which is about 45 minutes away, and they will unload the boats straight from there. Um, <clears throat> after they have unloaded the, uh, the fish in Dulac, they will bring it up to our plant in Homa, Louisiana. And at that point is, uh, the, uh, I kind of blew through real quick, but the first picture was is, is of our deck at our plant, and which is fully um, FDA and HACCP approved. And we have technicians up there that stick the fish. And so basically what we do is we almost grade the, when it comes to tuna, uh, the tuna grade is, it, it can be difficult from customer to customer. Uh, one person sees a red and another person sees a burgundy or sees a brown. And so our technicians from the, 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 the three or four technicians that we have that stick to fish um, have over 60 years 
of grading fish. Now I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Um, basically, they'll grade the fish as soon as it comes off the dock. Explain what sticking the fish is. Okay, sticking the fish. Don't you guys know all this stuff? Yes. <laughs> Sticking the fish, what they're going to do is, uh, when it comes off of the boat, they're going to stick the fish. So they're going to take a shishibo, which is a, 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 a long, probably about a, a foot and a half, two foot long tube that basically looks like a car antenna, okay? It's hollow in the middle. And what they'll do is they take the shishibo and they take it up by the, uh, the fin, okay? The dorsal fin. And what they'll do is they'll stick it straight into it. They will get a piece of the bloodline that runs through the fish and also get a piece of the meat. They'll pull that out, and then they squeeze out that little tube of meat that comes out. They'll also take a cut, a tail cut. Uh, they'll go down towards the tail, and they'll take a nice little section of it up. And what they do is called sticking the fish, and that determines the grade. So once they have this, <clears throat> Once they have this grade determined, then we pay the boats as it is. We pay the boats on ones and twos and threes. Now in the tuna industry, the grade can go anywhere from a one plus, one, one minus, two plus, two, two B, two G. I mean, it's, it's all over the board depending on which coast you're from. So when they, we buy the fish as ones and twos. That's how we buy it. Then we take the fish back to our plant and then we stick it again. And at that time is when we determine a one plus, a number one, a two plus, two B or two or three. That's basically the grade and that's what it is when it's called sticking them. Now the, 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 the meat itself, it usually takes a good 20 minutes for it to bloom. And especially after you cut it. Uh, you, cut it, you cut it open and it expose the meat to the fresh air and then the hemoglobin start to expand. And that's where you, where you develop the color in the tuna itself. And so on the second grade that we do at the, uh, at the plant, on the deck, we'll have a whole deck full of all of our fish and we'll have them all lined up and we have technicians that go right behind them, stick, 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 stick and they walk all the way down the line. And then they go back to the very beginning again and then they, they'll, they'll determine the grade at that point. The customer who calls me up, Brad, who calls me up and buys ones and two pluses. And then at that point, once I get the order in and I get it into the plant, they determine the one and the two plus. And, and I say this to a lot of the brand new customers out there, that it usually takes two to three orders to get your grade straight because your grade may be different than his grade. And it's just a matter of placing the fish with the right customer. Um, and <clears throat> so what happens is, is that once they get it all stuck and then we've determined, okay, this is a fruge fish, this is going, you know, this is a high end two plus. Uh, everybody wants red meat, right? Because they eat with their eyes. Uh, and one thing that Richard did, did, did bring up is, um, you know, there's a lot of things that happen with a tuna that uh, people will look, instantly look at it and think that it's a bad fish. Just because it's a blondie, or it's got a little brown streak in it, or it's got a little bit of a, a yaki, or, or a rainbow. I mean, there's all kinds of different terms with it. Um, most places that are going to want it, you know, going into a sushi place, they're going to want number ones. That's going to be freshness, color, fat, uh, translucentness. And that's the main thing. But then after, when you get into the restaurants that are gonna cook the fish all the way, you know, you can get a piece of fish that is, that is a two plus, that looks great, it's a beautiful color, but it may have a little bit of blonde streak in it, what we would call a rainbow streak in it. And that is from a diet. Uh, it could be from uh, 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 dragging it up onto the deck of the boat and it got bruised on, on one side of the fish. And once you cut into that, of course, we stand behind our, we'll stand behind our, 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 our fish 100%. Um, but you can, that product is still a wonderful product. If you were going to cook the product and if you're going to cook it completely through, you don't need to pay $15, $16 a pound for number one. If you're going to cook it all the way through and have a nice protein, you can get a number two that happened that may be a brown or something like that or, or, or a blondie in it and still have the same great tasting product. It just may not look the best. So the grade definitely 
can change, but we do a damn good job knowing what our customers want and knowing that most people will eat with their eyes and they're going to get the, the, the you know, the, um, if a number two customer is the best customer you can have and a number two tuna may not be as bright red as, uh, as a one or a two plus, but it's still a damn good fresh piece of meat and it's usually considerably cheaper. And if you're going to cook it completely through or just leave a little bit of a pink, that's a great fish for you. Um, Jensen tuna, again, uh, all of our species that we deal with out of Louisiana is a wild product from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, anywhere from yellowfin, which can run, you know, 100, 120 pounds, to blackfin that run 15, 20 pounds. Um, we do a lot with pompano. Of course, pompano runs in the spring. I don't know if any, I'm sure you guys know what pompano or a lot of the chefs in here would know what pompano is. Nice buttery flavor. Uh, surf fish is a great little uh, um, uh, to, to cook whole. Um, and then we take care of drum that run the blacks, uh, the black drum that run in the winter time. Um, of course, we have our sister company is the uh, uh, Gulf Treasure. They deal with a lot of the, uh, the shrimp. Um, and we take care of anything that comes out of the Gulf, we will take care of it. And we will supply any customers that we can when it comes to uh, Gulf species. <clears throat> Again, uh, grading is some of the toughest in the industry. We have years, we have 30, 40 years of good loyal customers. And to be able to develop that relationship just doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you have to know what you're doing and we have to make sure that we are sticking the fish right and we are handling it properly from the gulf to your plate. Um, well, again, that's the double graded system, you know, what I'm talking about, we stick the fish twice. And again, when we move five, six hundred head of tuna a day, you know, we may have one or two problems, a downgrade. Sometimes the fish falls from the time that it, it leaves our, uh, our plant to you, uh, the fish may fall, a color may go down, or the, or the freshness may get a, little, uh, get a little weak or something like that. We stand behind it, but it does not happen a lot. I mean, again, it's 99% as we are spot on with our grade to make sure that, that, that Fruge is getting the right fish. In fact, I don't think that I've really taken any kind of credits or anything from Fruge. Uh, we are that we are that spot on with our fish. Again, over 60 years of sticking to fish, uh, the boys down there do a damn good job at it, and they will continue to do it. Um, giant bluefin. If, if it's not giant bluefin that we take care of, I mean, there's there is plenty of bluefin. You hear a lot about uh, the bluefin being overfished. Um, a lot of our captains on our boats out there um, are telling us they found honey holes at the bluefin, and we're talking giants. We're talking anywhere from four to 800 pound fish um, are telling us that there are so many bluefin that they can almost walk on the water. Um, it is a very regulated industry. You can only have a certain amount of catch in order to have a bluefin. But the, believe me, the bluefin out of the Gulf of Mexico is, is doing really good right now. Um, we get a lot of uh, high, yellow, uh, high end yellowfin and big eye. Uh, the big eyes are gonna be more the fattier fish. And uh, that's what a lot of the, uh, the Japanese uh, markets will take, is they definitely want big eye. We move a lot of big eye into New York and over to the Japanese market. Um, we do import Vietnam fish. And again, like I said, in the wintertime, when the fishing is uh, rough in the Gulf of Mexico, we will uh, import in from Vietnam. The owner, Ken Trin, is uh, Vietnamese. He spends probably a good six to eight months in Vietnam perfecting the fishing techniques over there. Um, they, he has taught them actually what they do in Vietnam now is that they swim a lot of fish. Um, a lot of the boats, this goes back to the bluefin actually, is, is that when they, when they get a bluefin, they will actually leave it on the line 
and calm it down and they'll swim it in, all right? So they have it hooked to the back of the boat and the boat will steam on in nice and slow and the fish is on the line behind it, it just kind of swims behind it. And what that does is it calms the fish down because when you bring a tuna into the boat and it's pissed off and it's flopping and it's jumping all over the deck and you're doing the best you can to control this fish, to bleed it, to clip it, to gut it, to stick it, to get into ice, that's a lot, of, um, a lot of damage done to that fish, and therefore it starts to burn up. All the fat that's in its body, because a tuna is like an engine. I mean, this thing is like a V12. I mean, this baby was just flying all the time, and it's just always producing all this heat. So the more heat that it produces and it's fighting, the more fat that it burns, and therefore the color of the fish itself starts to burn. So when you calm the fish down, and they do this on a giant bluefin, they calm the fish down because obviously a bluefin is gonna go for $30, $40 a pound as opposed to six or eight bucks a pound. So they calm the bluefin down and they'll swim it to the dock. And then once they, once they get it to the dock and they swam it for a day or so and it's calmed down, then they're able to process it and get a much better fish out of it. So what they do in Vietnam is it's a lot of uh, um, handline fish. So they will hook the fish up, and then they'll hook them onto the back of feeders in the back of the boat, and then they'll swim it in. And once they come closer to the dock and to the port, then they start processing the fish. And therefore, the, the tuna itself has calmed down considerably. Therefore, you get more ones and two pluses out of Vietnam. We do not import, when it comes to our import, we do not import any number twos. Um, the air freight to bring the product over, it is just too astronomical on a number two price. So therefore we bring only ones and two pluses, the, the higher end fish. All of our twos and threes that come out of Vietnam and also a lot of them out of uh, Louisiana, uh, we save those for our frozen production, which we will process, CO treat, and then freeze. <clears throat> So with, the, with the, the, the fresh market, as everybody knows right now, these, the guys at Fruge and I'm sure a lot of you on the other end buying the product from them, um, you're probably getting a lot of sticker shock because the tuna, again, we've talked a lot, you know, salmon, um, uh, shrimp, you know, and tuna is, you know, top four items. Um, and when you have a tuna on a plate and you're paying this, this astronomical price that you, that, you, that you figure that is high because it's cut into your profit margins, it's been a pretty rough year with the tuna production. Um, starting as of pretty much about a year ago, uh, the, the, the global market itself really ramped up. And you were seeing a lot of China, India, and Japan come online and they started taking a lot more product. And therefore they started sucking up a lot more fish and it started causing this uh, um, uh, drought in fish. And then what, when the, the fresh tuna isn't there, everybody goes over to the frozen product. And so what happened is, is that you saw earlier in their sheet this year that the frozen market took off and it started just blowing up and everybody started grabbing it because they weren't able to get a hold of their fish. So therefore, any fresh product that was being caught at that time was being processed for the frozen, which then again turned the fresh market into a drought. So what we have done ourselves is we've definitely aligned ourselves with our frozen product. It is a CO treated, um, anywhere from loins to steaks to saku block. Um, a product of uh, Mexico is what we do down in Louisiana. And then again, the Vietn uh, Vietnamese product that we, we do bring in. Also, going into the other thing that we, we had to align ourselves with is the, the growing um, uh, farm-raised product. Uh, it started with our Cobia farm, and Cobia is a product of uh, Louisiana. It's a very big product out of the Gulf of Mexico. And we decided to go ahead and have a farm in uh, Vietnam to farm-raise our Cobia. The, the cobia is a, a, an extremely fatty fish. Uh, a lot of the sushi joints will use it actually right now f instead of homachi because it's got such a uh, high fat content to it. Then we decided to go into the redfish. The redfish, you know, the red drum out of Louisiana, uh, another uh, tightly regulated um, industry. 
And uh, it's very hard to bring redfish to, to even get it out of Louisiana into any other states because it's so regulated and most of, of it stays in Louisiana. So we decided to go ahead and farm raise it. These are the exact same species uh, that we farm raise in uh, Vietnam. The other one that just came on is our speckled trout. Again, that, this is the species from Louisiana. Now, these are, most of these are, are brackish water um, product. Uh, ours are, are farm raised in open ocean pens, so they have a nice clean water that comes through. You don't usually have that muddy taste to it that you would get off of a wild product. Um, all three of these items are very consistent. Uh, again, they are uh, inexpensive and they are a great center of the plate product uh, that you guys can, uh, you know, inquire with through Fruget. <clears throat> again, just being a vert vertically, vertically ugh, integrated company, sorry, um, Jensen Tuna is able to produce some wonderful product for you guys. And the way that we have uh, aligned ourselves with Fruge uh, to take care of uh, to take care of them, we do the best we can, and we stand behind it. Um, one thing I do want to talk about going into this is the 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 hidden costs. Not necessarily hidden. I mean, everybody knows about it. Uh, is transportation, just the logistics to get the fish from the Gulf of Mexico to your plate is a pain in the ass, and it costs a lot of money. Um, with air freight that costing anywhere from a dollar to a buck and a half a pound. Uh, trucking, you know, a quarter to 50 cents a pound. But just to be able to get the product to you, you know, Brad will call me up when he does his buying and there's only certain days that they come by and pick up that we need to make sure and have that fish for them on that day. And if we don't have it, it is, it, it's, you know, it's the old saying, it's called fishing, it's not called catching. Uh, you know, if it was catching, everybody would do it. You know, we are dealing with the wild species here. We're doing the best we can in order to, to take care of all of the customers. And um, we feel that we do a damn good job with it. It's just a matter of getting the product to our plant and catching the fish and, and, and getting it to our customers. Oh, that was it. So, I hope I didn't mangle that too bad. I haven't spoke to a crowd in five or six years. Any questions on tuna? I will be around. Yay. Thank you.